Get ready to dive into a world where empires stand on the brink of war and terrible monsters tear at the fragile borderlands of men. The Adventurer Conqueror King System Imperial Imprint, or as we like to call it, Axe 2, is now live on Kickstarter. Axe 2 is the new edition of the acclaimed best-selling fantasy role-playing game. You'll find everything you need to enjoy epic fantasy campaigns with a sweeping scope. Whether you want to crawl through dungeons, experiment with alchemy, crossbreed monsters, run a merchant emporium, raise an undead legion, or even conquer an empire, Axe 2 supports your playstyle. Axe 2 integrates experience point mechanics, making campaign activities a seamless part of the core gameplay loop. Your character levels up in new and exciting ways each time you play, adding massive replayability to each of your adventures. Axe 2 offers 18 character classes, 378 spells, new combat mechanics, and so much more. Support Axe 2 on Kickstarter today. How powerful is the Cox Network? So powerful that one day, the internet will let your doctor perform miracles from thousands of miles away. Connecting to remote operating room. Giving a whole new meaning to the term house call. Operation complete. The Cox Network. With gig speeds everywhere. It's internet built for tomorrow, today. Cox, bringing us closer. In Cox serviceable areas, speeds vary and are not guaranteed. Cox terms apply. Other restrictions may apply. For the fourth year in a row, Dawn is partnering with iHeartRadio for Can't Cancel Pride, a campaign that has raised over $11 million for the LGBTQ plus community. Dawn continuously strives to celebrate visibility and inclusivity for all, and that means supporting amazing organizations like Centerlink, providing safe spaces where over 52,000 community members go each week to receive critical and life-saving services. Dawn is there for your home, or your home away from home. So visit can'tcancelpride.com to learn more. Knocked Prone is a clean, chaotic, and deep podcast for D&D nerds. Find more ways to support our show in the episode description. Last time on Knocked Prone, you see with a big ol' smiling grin in his mugshot, Zag Fernhollow as their most recent arrest. You have stumbled into a cop bar. Welcome to the Shadowfell, everyone. Is the owner a shapeshifter? I don't believe that Zag is guilty i think he's an innocent person do they allow visitors zag you are currently locked up in a prison cell you are going to have three actions throughout a day that you can do to try and make prison life a little easier congratulations you're a year closer to getting out of here wait what what if we disguised me as a table. <laughs> and then you can bet on me. You find a tablecloth and you are able to uh, straighten your back in such a way that you resemble an animated table. The mimic bursts into flames and is dead. <laughs> you see a long bridge leading to this high security prison that has spotlights all around it. This bridge is a one way in, one way out sort of situation to this prison. Whether you're a halfling, a giant, or somewhere in between, around the table with your friends, playing Dungeons and Dragons. And if life ever knocks you down, your dice will surely turn around. Roll your stats, it's time to quest. Let's put your characters to the test. Let's join Zag really quick. We're going to do two days. So you have now six actions of your sentence here, Zag. So the last thing that happened is you were fed some birthday cake tasting slime and told happy one year anniversary. Okay. So real quick looking around like it's anything different. Obviously time isn't moving right or there's something affecting Zag's mind that makes him unsure of how, like the time frame right, right. Mm-hmm. if he thinks it's the first day so can i perceive what is happening uh go ahead and roll me religion history or perception your choice okay 23 crap it's not gonna do it with, with a 23 <laughs> you are very easily able to tell this shadow fell prison is built in a way that certain convicts their time is sped up in comparison to the other convicts whose time is slowed down. 
depending on how much a person is supposed to suffer, they either want a very high turnaround time or a very long suffering time. The dwarven woman Doria in your cell has a long suffering time. You and Snuffs have a short turnaround time. So Zag's able to perceive he is going to age super fast here. One day is equal to one year. Okay. <laughs> All right. Zag would like to, you said there's like eating times where I can see other cellmates and stuff. Yes. So you're part of the general population. Gen pop. So you can go to the meal area and discuss with the other inmates. However, it is heavily guarded. There are guards with like massive crossbow bolts with arcane and energy like flowing throughout them. Okay, well, Zag would like to go out to the Gen Pop area and just kind of ask around and see if anybody knows of a way out. Roll me a persuasion check. Nine? Are you trying to narc? Get out of my face, kid! I just want to get out of here! Yeah, everyone wants to get out of here! Do you know how... Is, has anybody ever gotten out? Um, I think there was... And he, like, looks side to side. No. No, I don't think so. And then looks at you as he looks at at a guard. Is there anywhere out of sight from the guards that I could talk to this guy? Not in the mess hall area. What else do I see as I look around the the mess hall? It's like a school cafeteria. You know that scene in Guardians of the Galaxy where they're in prison and they have to get out? Oh, yes. That is exactly what this prison looks like on the inside. You need a raccoon. Yeah. You need a raccoon. Is there any talking raccoons nearby? (laughs) I'm going to try something different. Okay. Zag is going to try and intimidate. I'm going to cast Thaumaturgy. Okay. And um, I'm going to alter the appearance of Zag's eyes to almost make them burn with, like, just a fiery rage as he leans in and says, You're going to tell me now. Okay, fair. Go ahead and roll me an intimidation check. Oh, 19. 19? Yes! Zag is scary. Prison time. This gnome is who you were talking to, and... He is standing in a bowling pin fashion with a group of gnomes that he's also kind of a part of. You notice as they all pee their pants and topple over, and then a dwarf walks over to you and says, Strike! And (laughs) (laughs) and this dwarf kind of sizes you up as he walks over, noticing that you are decently tough, taking out an entire gang of these gnomes. And so he looks at you and he says, You looking to get out? Yes. Okay, yeah, I think I know a way, but you're going to have to talk to my representative, Doria Greyhead. Okay, well, I guess, uh, is Ada in that mess hall area as well? She is not. So okay. with Doria, with her time being slowed down versus sped up, she has been here for so long that she only stays in her prison cell, and the only time that she does anything else than just sit is when she's fed, and that is only okay. to stay alive. Well, then I guess Zag will wait until he goes back to his cell to speak with A day passes as... Shoot, that was the, a whole day? That was a whole day. That was three oh, actions. Oh, man, I feel like I know how to get out, <laughs> but I want to see this through because I think I know a way. It would kill my curiosity to not bite the hook. I know, but I'm pretty sure I've 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 been studying while you guys were doing this whole table fight. I am like 99% sure I can get out. You were led can back. I have four actions in this no, day. No, no, no. Dude, were, I I need all three to get out. <laughs> you were led back to the prison cell and magnetized again to the wall. And Ada looks up from her stance and I hear you looking for me. I'm trying to find a way out. I think I know a way. I, I'm all here. There's a sewer system that we could potentially get a way out, but we'll need a team. Okay, I can I can probably help out. Who 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 are who's going? What do you need? Our team needs a boat, but obviously in in prison there aren't many boats. I've concocted a list of things. I, you probably haven't seen the outside. We are surrounded by a moat. I have tried to escape this prison time and time again and failed. The closest I ever got was I tried to paddle swim across that moat, and I got out through the sewer system, but I didn't think that they would have things lurking in the waters to bring me back. We need a boat. She looks around and notices that a guard is taking... There's a guard shift change, and so she says, There's a myriad of things that I think could potentially work as boats. There's wooden barrels in the mess hall that could work. There's a bathtub in the warden's office that we could potentially get to float. 
an inflatable pool flamingo in the warden's pool, but that's going to be really hard to get to. <laughs> a large yoga ball in the exercise gym, but the gym rats here are ruthless and don't let anyone use it. And there's a giant hamster ball in Kelric's old room. Did you say Kelric? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the warden's son, Warden Big Fur. Kelric, Kelric Big Fur? Yeah, yeah. I know Kelric. Oh, you do? Oh, well, his mom is the prison warden here. She's she's kind of a no-nonsense type of lady. Belladonna's her name. She founded the Nightshade Prison Complex. Apple far, fell far from the tree on that one. So, do I know this is Grom's mom? I'm confused on that. Yeah, roll me a history check. That's not going to do it. <laughs> I fail. You don't know who this woman is. Uh, you can kind of see that she has a semi-resemblance to Grom. However, you just think like, gosh... Zag be more inclusive like like not all <laughs> dwarves look the same so you kind of like brush it past you okay how many actions do I have left I feel like I didn't necessarily say I wanted to take an action talking is a free action do I have three left in this day I'll let you have three more in this day okay I'm gonna go for it okay does ringing my bell that has to oh I don't have any items you don't me. have any items Son on of you. A gun. okay this is all gonna depend on this next thing okay. I would like to take my pick my lock pick and attempt to pick the lock on my handcuffs Okay, roll me a sleight of hand check. Oh, no. If I, if I got this, I swear I'm going to get out. And you're not proficient with thieves tools, correct? Nope. Okay. That would be a 10. 10? Okay, burn a point of inspiration. Shout out to the Himbo Squad. Dirty 20. A dirty 20? Dirty 20. Your prison handcuffs unclasp, and you are able to unmagnetize yourself from the wall, and you are now standing in your prison cell, unshackled, and you don't know how long the alarm is going to take to go off, but you do know that with you unshackling your handcuffs, guards and alarms are sure to be coming any second. Okay, um, would it cause me an action to kick over the lockpick to Ada? No, you could you Okay, so her. as that happens, Zag's lockpicks are gonna click open, he's gonna kick the lockpick over to Ada, and he says, if you can't follow me, I'll be back for you. You too, Snuffs. And then he- We'll go on that cruise someday! (laughs) Zag's going to put his hands back in the handcuffs to try and make it look like he's still tied up. He's gonna use thaumaturgy to yell out as loud as possibly can. Guards! 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 Help! Help! She's trying to kill me! Roll me a persuasion check with advantage. I'm telling you, I think I cracked it. 25. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> a guard runs in, handlebar mustache flowing in the wind. What, what do you need? He ran in. He ran in. The okay. door is wide open with a 25. He left the door wide open. He's standing right in front of you. Okay. Is she attacking you? Is it psychic? She sometimes does that to me. <laughs> she makes fun of me. My handlebar mustache isn't the best, but it's a good one. Okay. So um, now that Thorn has died, when that happened, Zag knew immediately because he regained all of his previous innate powers of yes. peace domain cleric. As soon as that door swings open and that guy gets, that guard gets as far in his pocket, Possible, he will cast Odaluke's Resilient Sphere. A sphere encloses Zag. Nothing can pass through the barrier, but I can breathe. I'm immune to all damage, and I can't be affected by anything outside the sphere, and Zag is going to bolt. Oh man, you might have actually cracked this. Uh, how long does that last? One minute. Okay, I love it. As you bolt... Oh, sirens shoot. start to blare, and another year passes. Son of a gun. How powerful is the Cox Network? So powerful that one day, the internet will let your doctor perform miracles from thousands of miles away. Connecting to remote operating room. Giving a whole new meaning to the term house call. Operation complete. The Cox Network. With gig speeds everywhere. It's internet built for tomorrow, today. Cox, bringing us closer. In Cox serviceable areas, speeds vary and are not guaranteed. Cox terms apply. Other restrictions may apply. How powerful is the Cox Network? So powerful that one day, the internet will let your doctor perform miracles from thousands of miles away. Connecting to remote operating room. Giving a whole new meaning to the term house call. Operation complete. The Cox Network. With gig speeds everywhere, it's internet built for tomorrow, today. Cox, 
bringing us closer. In Cox serviceable areas, speeds vary and are not guaranteed. Cox terms apply. Other restrictions may apply. The alarm is blaring and you are booking it outside of your prison cell. My movement speed is halved while in the sphere. Okay, so you have a 15-foot movement speed. Yes, sir. Awesome. What are you doing? Where are you going? Well, I guess as soon as I get out of the prison cell, what what do I see? You see a ton of prison cells, and you see a large grouping of guards who all have these handlebar mustaches <laughs> approaching you and grasping at you but unable to. Okay. Um... I would like to look for two things. First of all, a general way out of the prison, and second of all, a sewer way out of the prison that Ada had informed me of. So you do notice that there is a uh, one-way-in-one-way-out sort of situation with the general exit of the prison. However, it is heavily locked. And then you do notice there is a sewer manhole cover. Okay. Um, How far away? It is in the mess hall area that you were in. It's kind of in the center of the mess hall area. However, it has a padlock on it. Son of a gun. Okay. Um, Zag will make his way over to that padlock. Okay. He's... Oh, I left my lock pick with Ada. Shoot. (laughs) Um... (laughs) <laughs> no. <laughs> well, what were the odds that she unbicked um, herself? Oh yeah, what are what what, what are, if she's behind me? She rolls a 17. Ada also unpicks her lock and is booking it behind you. However, gets tackled to the ground as soon as she leaves her prison cell. Go ahead and roll me a luck check. 3. A is that 3 is not going to do it. So unfortunately, the lock pick gets lost in this shuffle and you're unable to find it. Shoot. I'm at the padlock. Yes. Is this something I could break with brute force? Yes. Okay. I'm going to try and break it. Okay. Roll. uh, Even uh, to the point that it destroys Zag's hands, he will try to break this padlock. Okay. Roll me an athletics check. Okay. 16. A 16. You break three of your knuckles in your right hand as you punch this lock open. And it swings open, and you have a sewerway in front of you, and there are so many guards, like, grouped up behind you trying to stop you. For a second, it almost feels like Auto Luke's resilient sphere is going to burst on you, but it holds true. I will jump into the sewer. Okay. You fall effortlessly down this long sewer way and you splash into the water in this like hamster ball esque sphere that you've casted with magic. You see four pathways. You are Uh, at a four way intersection. Where is the water, like the flow of water heading? I would assume it's headed, you know, wherever the water is flowing outwards is where I will want to go. There are two directions. The north and the west are both coming to the center, and then they are feeding into the south and the east rivers. If you want to follow a waterway out, you'd have two options. Okay. East and south? Yep. Brooke, east or south? Ready? One, two, three, go. South. Okay, I'm going south. Okay, another year passes. Oh my gosh. Dude, this is going to be weird. So you head south. Roll me a nature check. Seven. With a seven, you travel for a long ways and you make it to this four-way intersection with water coming in from the north and from the west. So you come in from the north to the center of this intersection and you see that there's water flowing out to the south and the east. Marissa, south or east? One, two, three, go. We're going east. 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 Roll me another nature check. Dude, my nature's not that great, though. What'd you get? Nat one? A nat one. Did that that do it? Uh, You walk down the path for quite some time and you get to this four-way intersection with water coming in from the north and from the west, and it flows out to the south and the east, and another year passes. Hey everyone, editing Cade from the future here. I just realized that Alec didn't use Himbo's luck right here, so I'm going to give him a point of inspiration. So Alec, when you listen to this episode, you get a point of inspiration for not using your Himbo's luck in this situation that could have changed your natural one into something better. Carry forward. How old are you now? Dude, this is going to change everything. Okay, so I've been following this path for a while. North goes to south. North goes to south. I'm switching West it up. goes to east. I'm going east. Okay, so you go to the east. Roll me a nature check. Not natural one. A natural one? Not natural. It's a two minus one. Oh, so unnatural one. A dirty <laughs> one. Dirty one. Nice. 
With a dirty one, you go to the east and you come upon this four-way intersection with water going from the north to the south and from the west to the east. Which direction would you like to go? Until I figure this out, I'm just going to continue the, down this path. At, at the next intersection, can Zag pause and just look around and try and figure out the way to go? Yeah, we're only investigation check. Three. A three? With a three investigation, you have a feeling that south is the option to go. South it is. All right, so you go south. Another Roll me a nature passes. check. <laughs> Roll me a nature check as, yes, another year passes. Four. I'm going to switch dice. Pause the game. Okay, wonderful. I'm going to turn around and go directly back the way I just came. To the north? Okay. Sure. Uh, roll me a nature check. Twelve. You're kind of flowing against the water, and you get to this intersection of water. I will say, even though you are a himbo, you are not necessarily just blind to seeing what's going on here. It seems that every single direction that you are going in, some sort of mind trickery is at play, or some sort of creature is lurking in this water that is causing you to be dragged back to the same spot that you started. Investigation again. Can I tell which way is the best way to go? Sure. Roll me investigation. 14. A 14. You are positive that it's to the west. It's the only way you haven't gone. To the west I go. Nature check. Nature check. Another year passes. Ooh, natural 20. Natural 20. Finally. I've been rolling like crap. With this natural 20, you are able to see through the water that there is this eldritch tentacle that keeps holding on to the Auto Luke's resilient sphere. It keeps holding you back as whichever direction you were walking in. And with your natural 20, you are able to summon this holy aura from off of you, from your clerical abilities, and burst this kraken-esque tentacle off of you and it withers away seven years have passed since you have entered into this prison zag you head to the west and immediately are funneled out from this sewerway into an open body of water that is this massive moat Okay, a massive moat. What do I see? Is there an, an you end? You see that there is a large bridge to the east of you, and then to the south of you, there's a bluff of land, but it is miles from where you are. Gross. So the moat is just all the sewage from the prison? Yes. Cool. Gross. I guess, <laughs> I, I, guess I will head to the bridge, where to the that's bridge? the closest. Okay, uh, roll me an athletics check. You were just making sure I roll all <laughs> all my weaknesses. 11. 11. Okay. So it only takes you two actions to get to the bridge. So you are now at the base of this bridge. What would you like to do? Climb up. Okay. You climb up the bridge. Another year passes. Oh. And so you get to the top Hold of this. On. Why am I aging outside <laughs> of the prison, though? Is there something on me? Roll me an investigation check. Oh my gosh, it's way too late to have asked this. (laughs) I'm so mad. 13. With a 13, you feel a microchip stuck into the back of your neck. Dude, I didn't even get any of my gear. No? (laughs) I have nothing. You have a loincloth. I have inflict wounds. Can I cast inflict wounds on myself? Cut the back of my neck to the point that I could get that microchip out. Totally. Roll me inflict wounds damage. 11 points of damage. 11 points of damage, you feel this microchip kind of snap in your neck, and you've sufficiently broken this microchip off. And with this weight off of your shoulders of this microchip breaking, you are now just realizing, even though it was only seemingly days, it still felt like seven years that you've been in this prison. You are so happy to be outside. And what makes you even happier is, across the bridge, you see your three compatriots who are running towards you. However, in the center between you and these three compatriots, you see this tall, herringon rabbit. He sniffs in your direction, Zag, and bears these long fangs that are dripping with blood. And as he smells your scent, Zag, he also smells the rest of the party smelling of your scent as well. And he is going to bare his teeth and growl, Nobody escapes prison! Everyone, roll me initiative. Everyone, I'm in the party again! We look like men. (laughs) 
Yes, so you guys look very different. Zag also looks very different. He looks about a decade older. I would like to introduce how Zag looks. Go for it. Zag pulls himself up over the bridge on the opposite side of the enemy. He has the most patchy beard you've ever seen. <laughs> but in his mind, it's longer than Grom's. <laughs> I mean, seven Grom, years. Grom's looks beautiful right Wait, now. So okay, I'm, there's no old? comparison. I'm 27. Zag is like almost 10 years older than before. Patchy beard. He's covered in sick prison tats that look terrible. It's a barrier tattoo, by the way. He's going to pull himself up over the bridge. He's going to be confused as all get out. Like, what just happened? Where am I? He's got a big old gash on the back of his neck. He's going to look across the bridge, see his friends. For half a second, it's not real. Before he says, Grom! 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 Zag! Zag! I got a 19. I got a 19 as well. I got a nat 20. After Whoa! all those terrible what rolls. What the heck, guys? I got a 15 and I felt good about myself. It's <laughs> like y'all rolled. Ephemia and Grom do an, a roll off. I got a 15. I got a 16. All right. So Grom is going to go before Ephemia. However, since you both rolled the same number, I'm going to try a new little mechanic. You can each provide each other the help action as a bonus action for your first turn of combat. So you'll have advantage on each other's rolls. Almost as if you're helping one another out by, like, combining your attacks with one another. So since days have passed, are we fully rested? <laughs> so time does not pass in the astral plane. However, when you are shunted out of the astral plane into the shadow fell through the portal, a D12 of days past minus one. And so Ephemia's uh, dice roll of a D12 being 10 minus one, nine days passed. And a day was equal to a year in Zag's prison. So you guys have been apart for nearly a decade. Sorry. <laughs> Finally, someone else. <laughs> I, don't even, I thought it was I don't a even good care. roll. I don't even care how long it was. I'm just glad I didn't roll it. I was really excited about that roll. I'm like, yeah, hey, look at me. You guys know what? Good night. Zag is like super mature now. Oh. oh. Like everything's changed in that last well, nine Yeah, we'll see about that. In that last that. nine Physically days. Physically mature, <laughs> but you've only mentally matured <laughs> no, nine days. Nine days. <laughs> <laughs> so, but he looks like a man yeah. now. <laughs> As Grom, you shout out, Zag! And Zag shouts out, Grom! You notice this Herengon vampire is standing in the middle of this bridge. I knew it with that outfit. And he looks at the three of you, and sniffs <laughs> carrots. <laughs> you it's carrots! Easy. I can see through your illusion. I'm going to kill you! And Zag, you are first in the initiative with a natural 20. You get a surprise round. So go Ooh. ahead and roll it. You know, that okay. makes sense since he's coming up from behind him. How far apart or am I from the rest of the party? You are about 20 feet from this vampire rabbit, and the vampire rabbit is about 40 feet from your party. So you are 60 feet away. You said he's undead? He is undead. You probably shouldn't have told me that before you started. I'm a peace domain cleric again now. Okay. Yeah, radiant damage. No, even even better, guys. Okay, oh. first thing I would like to do is um, utilize one channel divinity, turn undead. Okay. Um, each undead within 30 feet of me must make a wisdom saving throw. If it fails, it's turn for one minute or until it takes damage. He has a negative one to wisdom, rolls a four, is going to burn a legendary resistance and chooses to succeed instead. And the second thing I will do is um, Zag will run the 20 feet distance towards Benicula. Benicula, yes. Towards you, you, Benicula. May, you may call him Benicula. Um, he's going to use his speech to yell at the party. I missed you guys so much. Also, let Thorn out of the bottle. And then he's going to cast an what? inflict. Did you guys bottle and the essence? The okay. essence of Thorn, yes. Okay, awesome. He's going to cast an inflict wounds on touch. He's going to grab Benicula by the back, and he's going to upcast it to fifth level. A fifth level inflict wounds? Yes. Okay, roll it. 26 to hit. A 26 will hit. So as he grabs Benicula on the back, just like l fire and light will emanate off his hands as he does 60 points of necrotic damage. 60 points of necrotic damage? 
Whew. Sometimes I really hate being the bad guy, and I hate to inform you this, but you would have hurt Benicula really, really bad if he wasn't a vampire and immune to necrotic damage. Shoot. Immune? Immune. Yeah. So you burn your inflict wounds, and the va- this vampire rabbit turns around and goes, Carrots! Carrots! And is that the end of your turn? You're just going to let me just do that whole thing? I'm sorry. That is so sad. <laughs> I was like, you have something better than radiant damage? Oh, nice. I was so excited. I'm so sorry. That's such a bummer that you let me do that. I'm so I have sorry. so many better things I could do. I'm so you sorry. You let me burn my fifth level <laughs> spell slot on that? Well, that's a huge bummer, and that's the end of Zag's turn. <laughs> Zag, you are the first in the initiative order. Shoot! So you didn't have. So you, you just finished your that's surprise true. round. Your surprise round was the only thing that was in vain, and that fifth level spell slot. <laughs> yeah, the fifth level spell slot, which is unfortunate. But you know what? We're gonna keep going like nothing happened. Is vampirism like? So he's obviously a vampire, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Is that a curse? I will say you let lycanthropy be cured by remove curse. Yes, but that was different because lycanthropy, they weren't born a lycanthrope. They were inflicted as a lycanthrope. You know what? What level are you casting this at? What level do I need? That's a good question. Hey, I will cast remove curse as a fourth level spell. With a fourth level spell, go ahead and roll me a d20. You need a 16 with no pluses. You need a 16 or higher. Oh, that's terribly hard. This is this is scary. 19! 19! I got a 19! Okay! Yes! With that... Shout out to Metallic Dice Games. (laughs) (laughs) This uh, vampire rabbit turns into a regular rabbit and goes, What did you do? I don't... I don't want carrots anymore. And with that, is that the end of your turn? Dude, I'm not gonna lie. I think Zag's nine days in prison changed him. I think he's gonna kick the rabbit off the bridge. (laughs) (laughs) Oh! Wait, you so have he, to yeah. ask before you kill someone. I'm not killing. I'm just kicking him into the water. Roll me. Well, sewage. <laughs> roll into the sewage. You know, he prevent, into the sewage. Listen, this is my thought. This bunny prevented Zag from running to Grom in a movie <laughs> moment. Like, slow motion run, jump up in the air, and embrace. He's suffering. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Those um, nine days in prison were real tough on him. <laughs> Zag is hard now, guys. <laughs> He's got tattoos oh, and everything. I have tattoos and a patchy, patchy beard. Roll me a contested grapple check. So I'm just going to let you know, he is a barbarian. He will have advantage on this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, my. I wish you had advantage. On strength? Uh, he got a nat 20 on the first. Oh, no. And a four on the second. So you have to get a no. natural 20. In order for this to work. Okay, so I'm changing my whole idea. <laughs> <laughs> I have to get a nat 20. You have to get a nat 20 right now. Okay. I believe. First one's 11. I'm burning inspiration. Okay. All right. Come on. 13. Uh, unfortunately. Ah, oh, the bunny doesn't the go. The bunny is going to say, well, if I can't have carrots anymore, maybe I can be like a regular vampire and eat your blood. And then he's going to bite you, Zag. And that is a 15 to hit. Miss. And he will do a claw attack at you instead with his second action. A 22 to hit. Hit. And then he'll do a secondary claw at you. What? Uh, 21 to hit. Hit. You have you have so hard foiled my sick <laughs> bunny plan. I'm so sad. You take 16 points of slashing damage, no longer necrotic damage, as you just. <laughs> I'm just so sad. <laughs> he had so many cool abilities. I will post it to the Patreon. If you're a Patreon member, go check out Benicula. He's the coolest character I've ever made. Not really. And so he's excited. been ruined. He's a bunny, and I'm gonna kick him off. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, that's the end of his turn. Grom, you are up. You are you are 40 feet away from this rabbit who is locked into hand-to-hand combat with Zag. I'm going to, yeah, I'm 40 feet away, so I will just move 25 feet towards him and okay. throw my hammer. Wonderful. So 14 to hit. A 14. Without his vampirism, a 14 will hit. Dude. And then a 19 to hit, so... A 19 will also hit. Sorry, kid. 16 points of bludgeoning damage. Okay. And then 6 points of radiant on the first one. 
Okay. And then 14 points of bludgeoning damage and 5 points of radiant on the second. So you deal 41 points of damage to this bunny, and he snarls his upper lip. Ephemia, you are up. You are watching as Zag and Grom are just wailing on this bunny. You have mustache a-flowing. Ephemio. Almost. So Ephemio. <laughs> <laughs> I forget. Ephemio. This bunny, and he's going to twirl his magical, magical mustache. Um, just because I need the opportunity to do it, okay? And how far am I from the bunny? You are 40 feet away. I would like to cast a second level hold person. Okay, what does he have to roll? Target must succeed on a wisdom saving throw. He has a negative one to wisdom. He rolls a nine minus one eight. Man. It's a 15 for say. Okay, so he is held. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to really be involved with like kicking this bunny, um, but I am going to watch it and while I twirl my mustache and laugh. Captain, what do we do about this rogue bunny? Ooh, I forgot about that. Um, <clears throat> I think it is obvious that the Zag escapee prisoner turned into the bunny and needs to be put back in its cell. Kill Zag! No, wrong. No, the bunny. The, oh, yes, the, the, the bunny. <laughs> Kill Zag the bunny! Yeah, and the they, bunny. Uh, they charge, and uh, uh, Celine, you are up. There is a paralyzed bunny, an entire army of... Cops running at this bunny <laughs> and Zag and Grom are just wailing on this thing. This poor little rabbit. I was so, so excited for this bunny fight. <laughs> so it's over, right? I'm kind of tempted to not do anything. Bunny seemed like a really good mate for Dude, Ron Swanson. Give me the help action. <laughs> Please. Wait, am I, am I even close to you, Zag? You are 40 feet away from Zag. Oh, 40 feet, of course. Just out of reach. Just out of reach. Ron, Ron Swanson hunts Ron, uh, for fun. Ron Swanson. And believes in getting your meat out of the woods, which Celine includes bunnies. Celine is... This session tonight has gone awry. <laughs> yes, I'm excited. <laughs> I'm going to do the stupid thing and pass up my opportunity to take an action or do anything. And instead, I'm just going to say, I'm glad that bunny showed up. Things were getting a little chummy in here. <laughs> okay, awesome. And do absolutely nothing else. Okay, awesome. Um, with that, it is going to be Zag, your turn. Okay, so he's still He's paralyzed. paralyzed, and Grom is on him as well as you were on him, and there is an entire army of, of cops, basically, running after this bunny. Okay, led I by would a like female. to grab this bunny and throw him off the bridge into sewage. <laughs> Uh, what is up with you and trying to I'm throw not, this bunny? I'm not going to have you roll for it because he's paralyzed. Actually, I will have you roll for it with advantage, and he'll have disadvantage because he's paralyzed. A natural one. Oh. 15. You successfully throw Benicula off the bridge. I want to do this similar to how Zag is going to dig deep down to the first time he met the party. He's so excited to see them. To when Ephemia masterfully threw a bottle at his own head. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> he's gonna pick up the bunny, harness that that feeling, and he's gonna throw he's gonna throw the binicula off the bridge into the sewage. Okay. Then then he's gonna look around at everybody, like what do we do now? And then he's gonna yell, Run! And he's gonna start running towards the other oh side of gosh. the bridge where the party is. Uh Femio is uh, is, Femio. <laughs> Femio. Uh, he's going to roll back his shoulders and go, Well gentlemen. It seems as if this might be taken care of. Yes, yes, sir. Uh, what's our next action? Um, I think we need to just get a drink. Oh wait, wait, let Ada out. Oh, uh, prison prisoner Ada. Yes, uh, whatever he said, let Ada out. And snuffs. And snuffs. All right. Uh. <laughs> With with your earlier natural 20, Ephemia, I'm going to count this as a natural success. How powerful is the Cox Network? So powerful that one day, the internet will let your doctor perform miracles from thousands of miles away. Connecting to remote operating room. Giving a whole new meaning to the term house call. Operation complete. The Cox Network. With gig speeds everywhere, it's internet built for tomorrow, today. Cox, bringing us closer. In Cox serviceable areas, speeds vary and are not guaranteed. Cox terms apply. Other restrictions may apply. 
the guards walk into the prison and pull out both of your yes. cellmates, <laughs> Zag, and leaving the prison, you see Snuffs and Grom, you see your mother. Mom? Mom! And I'll Grom! run forward and give her a big hug and... I did, didn't even know you were here. <laughs> Murden must have been guiding me the whole way. I, I brought your hammer and I'll show the new hammer that I created. Uh, Murden wanted me to uh, remake it, so I did. Um, but I also brought this and I'll put the sack of 100,000 battling credits at her feet and uh, the money you wanted. <sighs> Can you come home now? Zag's going to be standing behind Ada like in a line waiting for Grom's attention. <laughs> <laughs> um, Grom, this is with the hammer. It would have been enough money. But with the melted down hammer, it's so much money still. And the guards just let me go. I don't, I don't think we need to pay anyone. Oh. Oh. Well, all right. Well, well, that means you can come home. We just have to find the way, right? Uh, yeah, let, let's let's go. Um, who knows how to get out of the Shadowfell? Um, <clears throat> gentlemen, I need someone to lead me. <laughs> out, and, and this group of obviously innocent people, out of here. <laughs> yeah, yes, sir. Uh, uh, right away. Uh, all units, uh, report to the bridge, and please bring your fanciest of carriages uh, over and out. Marissa, you draw out that natural 20. <laughs> the whole session. Uh, you hear sirens blaring over the hillsides as a squadron of, of uh, carriage cars come over the mountains, and Zag, you feel this pull towards this vial that Celine is holding. Are we in a carriage right now? Um, yes. Where, where, so, what are we at? You We're guys at are at the, the top of this bridge. A luxurious uh, stretch carriage pulls up with cop lights all along the whole thing. You open it up and there is a free drink platter uh, being passed around by a gnome on the inside. Nice to see you, Captain. Uh, please take a seat. So you are able to uh, hop in this very luxurious paddy wagon and are being whisked away to wherever these guards uh, are taking you to get out of the Shadowfell. Okay, so Grom is holding Zag kind of kind of like an infant while Zag is, Zag's <laughs> arm is around Z- uh, Grom's shoulder. Okay. And he's crying into, into Grom's shoulder. Okay. Just, it was so hard. <laughs> it, it was so the longest Longest nine days of my life. I'm so sorry, brother. Why are you naked? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Zag is Zag is dirty and only in a loincloth and has nothing else with him. And then he'll stand up and he'll compose himself and he'll say, "I was in prison. I'm tough now." He walks up to Ephemia and holds out her, his hand to shake her hand. Uh, Ephemia puts his hand out. <laughs> Shakes a female's hand. He's gonna look at um, Celine and say, I think you have something that belongs to me. Yes, you are welcome to have this. I do not want it in my possession. Here you go. And I'm going to hand over the uh, small vial that I have filled with Thorn's essence. Um, Zag, what do you need that for still? Zag's gonna um, take the vial. He's going to say, I'm not entirely sure this is going to work, <laughs> but the archivist, my grunkle, told me it was totally going to work, and he's going to pop the cap. Do you mean the hologram <laughs> in the tower? <laughs> Out of this vial grows this massive shadow demon that you guys remember fighting, and being in the shadow fell, it withers and it looks at its own skin as it is beginning to disappear and zag with the information that you received from the archivist you know that you must reconnect with your brother or he will perish he does not exist without you um okay um so zag knows that okay so he's going to so zag doesn't have a shadow Right. Since he had cut his off. Yes. He's going to grab this essence of thorn and try and attach it to his foot like a shadow. 
Okay, uh, you do that. Everyone level up. What? Wow. We are what? level 10. What? And with that, Thorn reattaches to your foot. Go ahead and explain what you're doing with your level 10 level up, Alec. Okay. As <gasps> Thorn's essence reattaches to Zag, Zag will, at level 10, multi-class into Shadow Magic Sorcerer. Ooh. I like it. All right. Oh. I cannot survive on the material plane without Thorn, nor can he without me. So now with Thorn reattached to Zag's body, I can return to the material plane. But with that, Thorn will always be a part of Zag, but he will be backseat. He will be his shadow. And with that, I will have access to shadow magic utilizing Thorn's shadow, which only exists because of me. So I am in control of him. So does... Does Thorin still have any level of consciousness as your shadow? He may be able to, from what we under, from what yes. I understand, he may be able to be cranky about things I ask him to do, but at the end of the day, Zag is in control. I can command my Thorn shadow to do whatever I wish as a shadow sorcerer. So basically, I have a pet Thorn that's attached to me all the time. Oh, I have a pet brother. <laughs> yeah, I can be like, hey... Go hit that guy. <laughs> and he has to do it. Yeah. <laughs> because of my shadow magic. I love it. He needs me to survive, and Thorn will do anything to continue on. So he is permanently bound to me as my shadow, and that is that. The carriage stops suddenly, and Lieutenant Baxter approaches you, Ephemio, and says, <laughs> Captain Ephemio, <laughs> yes. we, we've reached the portal to the material plane. All right. Um, Take me. What are we to do in your absence? Um, (laughs) here's what you are going to do. Yes, yes, sir. You're going to fund the all-you-can-eat buffet. (laughs) Oh, yes, yes. Yes, uh, double all-you-can-eat buffet. Yes. Uh, All everyone can eat buffet. Yes, and Mimic Max, you better tip him at least 30%. Mimic Mike? (laughs) (laughs) and with that that is where we're going to end our session for the night my name is Cade the host and dungeon master of this Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition adventure and I'm joined here by the characters to my left Alec playing Zag Mason playing Grom Marissa playing Ephemia a female. A female. Yeah. <laughs> Marissa playing a female. And Brooklyn playing Ron Swanson. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right. So I'm so excited. This has been this has been such a night. <laughs> so thank there you guys for being here. It would be chaotic. Yeah. yeah. Clean, chaotic, yeah. and deep. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> if you love this episode, go over to our Patreon, patreon.com forward slash knocked. We're gonna have a talked prone over these last two episodes where our good buddy Kelrick is going to dissect what happened, what didn't happen, how the party so rudely didn't even meet his mom, Belladonna Big Fur. But with that, we hope that you remember when life knocks you flat on your back, all you gotta do is keep rolling, and we hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Dude, Zach's hard now. Marissa, south or east, one, two, three, go! North! South or east, one, two, three, go! We did it. <laughs> you I broke guess. the system. I'm going upstream now. I'm going back to I prison. I told you how to get <laughs> At the next intersection, can I pause and try and swim in place and cast a detect magic over 10 minutes as a ritual? Over 10 minutes? Careful, because that's... You've aged like five years in the oh last five gosh, rounds. Oh my gosh, you're right. <laughs> Never yeah, mind. Like, Never mind. I'm like, <laughs> pause. Alec like dies. Take it <laughs> back. old age. I was taking also, it out on that little uh, buddy, dude. Hold person, it doesn't matter how many HP he had uh, because he drowned. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, paralyzed. I didn't think about Sink that. to the bottom of the lake. Um, I'm going to hey, have a conversation hey. with you because you didn't follow the rules. <laughs> you guys did miss me. Yeah. <laughs> I knew it. Okay, let's get this cavity filled. Uh, doctor, I think your tank is leaking laughing gas. Gas? <laughs> Did you hear you can save on gas at BJ's Wholesale Club? <laughs> Wait, you can save on gas at BJ's? <laughs> yeah, members save on everyday low gas prices. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> nope, these savings are no joke. <laughs> BJ's, absurdly simple savings. Shop today. Not a member? Go to BJ's.com slash simple savings.